Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am gonna be doing an update of five years. Hi Riley. Come on, you wanna come up? Come Riley's also gonna do the update. Come on, good girl. You lay down. Okay. I'm gonna be doing an update of my Moise engagement ring. I am coming up on five years of having this ring in five days. And I wanted to do a little update on how it's held up. I still feel about having a Moise night engagement ring and all of that fun stuff. So if you guys are new to my channel, two years ago, I think it was two years ago, I posted a video about my Moise night engagement ring. And before that, I had never really mentioned it or spoken it out loud that it was a Moise night ring ring and everybody thought it was a actual diamond and so that was a video that made me realize that a lot of people don't actually know about moissanite rings and it was something that wasn't readily talked about online and so i made a video just talking about my ring my thought process why we went moissanite instead of diamond and then i ended up doing a follow-up video to that as a little more in-depth detail and up-close look at the ring and so i'm going to show you guys some up-close views of the ring since it's been five years to just show you guys the wear and tear on it but also i just wanted to kind of circle back to how i feel about now having this ring for five years now being in a position where we could upgrade all of those different things and i thought i would just kind of break all that down for you guys so if you are new to my channel i'll have those videos linked down below those are some of my most viewed videos and I understand why because when I was looking for a Moise Knight engagement ring and looking for a diamond alternative option for an engagement ring at an affordable price I was looking into Moise Knights myself and there weren't that many videos on it when we got engaged we got engaged in 2017 and I feel like Moise Knights have become really popular since then and I actually know a bunch of people who have Moise Knight engagement rings and I feel like it's not as much of a I don't know untalked about subject as it used to be I love the fact that now brides are choosing alternative engagement rings, alternative wedding bands, and people are just being able to have a lot more freedom in what they're picking as far as a ring goes. But for those of y'all who are new to my channel, this is my engagement ring here, and I will have it linked down below in the description box. I got it off of Etsy. Well, I ended up sending the link to my now husband and he purchased it off of Etsy. This one is a nine by seven millimeter forever one moissanite stone and it is equivalent to around two carats sitting on a really thin band in a solitaire setting so when i got this ring i knew i wanted something extremely classic something that was timeless and this ring i would say has definitely not gone out of style since i got it and i have absolutely no regrets with the actual setting that i got the stone size that i got and i have just honestly enjoyed wearing it ever since i got it i still get so many compliments on it and it has truly been my style i really don't think even if i upgraded eventually that I would veer away from the oval solitaire. I just love the look of that. It makes your finger look a little bit longer. It's just elongated and really, really pretty. And I've got it paired with a thicker band. So this band is actually from a brand called Noemi. It's a diamond princess halo cut band and it's actually on white gold. So I have a white gold band with a yellow gold engagement ring band. And the reason I went with that is because I like having the white gold with all the tiny prongs in something with like a halo around the center stone. I think the white gold just makes it a little bit less distracting from the diamonds. But a lot of you guys ask about my band as well, but I really like the pairing of this specific ring with something like a thicker band because this ring sits up pretty high. Sometimes when you find a solitaire stone, even though it's just a single stone, no accent stones or halo, it doesn't sit high enough to actually sit right next to a thicker wedding band. So just keep that in mind. If you do end up going with a setting that is a little bit of a lower profile, it probably won't get caught on stuff as much like chunky sweaters. However, it's not gonna sit flush to any sort of raised wedding band. If you have just like a thin gold wedding band, then your ring's gonna be fine with it. But for something as thick and chunky as this wedding band, the actual engagement ring 
has to sit a lot higher. So I really like this one. Another reason that I really like this ring and a reason that I feel like it has held up incredibly since I got it five years ago now is because even though it's really, really thin like this, the actual band itself is a little bit more reinforced by the thickness of the band vertically. So even though it's not a super wide band from top down, when you look at it from the side, it's actually a much thicker band than you would think and that has really made the ring hold up. So I wear this all the time. Like I never ever really take it off except to sleep and I don't have to worry about it hitting against stuff. It has never changed shape. It hasn't dented at all. The only thing that really shows on this band is just everyday scratches and that is just gonna happen with any band that you get, whether it's white gold or yellow gold doesn't matter if it's a smooth band it's gonna get scratches as you wear it just in everyday life so even my white gold wedding band has scratches and so this isn't as shiny and polished as it was when I first got it but that's actually just to be expected with any sort of ring that you get so the wear and tear on it has honestly been so, so minimal. The stone itself, I have maybe cleaned once or twice in the last five years, and I'm not even exaggerating that. I never, ever clean my ring, and it still is so, so sparkly. So that's one thing that I really like about Moissanite, is that you don't have to buy the most high-quality, cut clarity and carrot of diamond to get that beautiful, brilliant shine in the light, and even not in direct sunlight. The the Moissanite is basically like a super clear diamond in that sense. So even if it's dirty and hasn't been washed, it still reflects light perfectly. It also is as close to colorless as you can get without being like, I guess, a pure diamond. It definitely has a little bit more of a rainbow sparkly effect in certain lighting, but it actually comes off very, very white. Like it doesn't actually come off super rainbow unless it's in very specific lighting, which I'll show you guys in some cutaways, but it doesn't have any murkiness or yellow tone to it like a diamond would unless you bought the highest clarity. So one thing about Moissanite, which I thought was really interesting actually, I ended up pulling out the receipts and like paperwork from this ring because it's been five years and I honestly forgot what kind of stone it was. I couldn't remember if it was the Forever One or the Standard Stone. So with this specific seller, which like I said, I'll have this ring linked down below, they offer two different stone option so there's the like standard one which i can't remember the name of it let me see if i can actually pull it up here so the standard one is the neo stone and the forever one is the upgraded stone which is going to have a little bit more of a sparkle it's going to be a little more colorless and less rainbow reflective to light so we ended up upgrading my stone to the forever one and i actually would really highly recommend that i've had absolutely no regrets or problems with this specific moissanite stone and so if you can afford it i would recommend just going ahead and upgrading that stone to the forever one but when we purchased this ring or when my fiance at the time now husband purchased this ring five years ago. He bought it for $2,250, so $2,250. Now, what's really fascinating is that you can get this exact same ring with yellow gold band and the upgraded stone for $1,500. So the actual ring itself did not hold its value. It actually decreased by around $700, which is honestly just fascinating to me. And that's maybe one thing that I would say if you are gonna invest in a diamond ring, that's probably gonna hold its value if not increase over time. The Moissanites, however, I have noticed that they have actually all decreased in value, which has honestly been amazing because I think it's made it a little bit more accessible to people. And that price is a really incredible, beautiful ring for $1,500. Like that is such an amazing price point for something like this, especially when you are getting that two carat look. And if that is important to you, which for me it was, I really wanted something that could just stand on its own and just looked 
beautiful. So I knew I always wanted something a little bit bigger than a one carat. And so at the time when we were looking at rings, a two carat stone as a diamond was completely out of our price range. And so I love the fact that we were able to get the look of it for a much more affordable price. We ended up getting married when we were 21 and 22. So we were relatively young. And so this was a really, really great option for us. And now being 26, I feel like it is still an incredible option. I would highly recommend a Moissanite ring to just about anybody. Like I said earlier, I know multiple people who have Moissanite rings and they are just beautiful in person. You really cannot tell unless you know diamonds. One thing I will say is that there are a few different cuts for the oval. So if you're looking at the oval specifically, there are two different types of cuts for this Moissanite stone. So there are two different options you could go with. A lot of times when you purchase a diamond oval, it's gonna be a more crushed cut. Whereas Moissanite, sometimes you can tell they're Moissanite because they're cut more of like a radiant cut. I think that's the right cut. I'm not a professional at stone cuts. I truly just know about my own ring, but that is the only thing that I feel like kind of gives it away. And if you know what to look for with the reflectiveness of the stone, you can kind of tell what a diamond is and what a moissanite is. But honestly, unless you tell people, nobody knows. I get comments on this ring literally all the time. People are always like, oh, he did so good. And I'm like, yeah, he did do really good because it's a beautiful ring. And I, I honestly love it. I feel like also it's just something that I feel really comfortable wearing everywhere. I don't have to worry about the stone. I've like hit it on stuff. It's held up incredibly well. It's extremely durable. It's almost the same durability and toughness as a diamond. So if you're worried about it getting scratched or chipping that is extremely extremely unlikely like I said I've had this for five years I've had zero issues with it and I still get compliments on it and it still has the exact same clarity brilliance radiance it truly looks like it's brand new except for the fact that the bottom is a little bit scratched up from just everyday use one thing I also really love about Moissanite is that now that Moissanite is so common, they have so many different styles. So you can get wedding bands in Moissanite, you can get a solitaire, you can get a halo style, you can get a pave band, basically any ring that you want in a diamond version, you can find now in Moissanite, which I think is really cool because again, it just makes it so accessible for people. The number one question, oddly enough, about my ring has been, how I clean it, which is really funny because I, I, like I said, I hardly ever clean it. But all I do is I use a really old toothbrush and some Dawn dish soap and I just, just kind of clean it with that. So that was funny because I ended up asking you guys on Instagram, like what your number one questions were. And they were split between like, do you regret it? And how do you clean it? The, do you regret it question? Not at all. I feel like it was absolutely the right choice for us at the time that we got engaged and I have Honestly, no regrets. I've loved this ring. I still love this ring. One of you guys also asked if I ever plan on upgrading and I'm not gonna say never, but I don't think really anytime soon. We have so many other things that we wanna do and buying a new ring is not one of those things right now. And because it's held up incredibly and it looks amazing and I still genuinely love it, I don't see myself really wanting to upgrade or needing to upgrade anytime soon. I'm not gonna say never because you never know what's gonna happen, but as of right now, five years in, I am extremely content with it and I'm still very much in love with it. That is kind of the five-year update on my ring, what it looks like, how I feel about it. Obviously, if you guys have any questions, please leave me a comment down below. I remember digging and digging for information about Moissanite and just trying to get reviews and videos that I could find about it before I made that purchase or before I even considered sending that alternative to, again, my husband at the time or fiance at the time, husband now. Um, but yeah, leave a comment down below. If you have any questions, I would love to know your thoughts as well. I know a lot of you guys who watched my past videos about Moissanite rings also chimed in and said that you are so obsessed with your Moissanite ring. So I know they're super, super popular now. But hopefully this video was helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe if you are new here. If you wanna check out the other videos that I have about my ring, I'll have them linked down below in the description box. But I will see you guys in my next one really, really soon. Bye guys.